And this is the uh, Republican Tom Emmer talking about tip credit. And the tip credit is a particularly interesting one because the candidate is on tape for 12, 13, 14 minutes talking about what he wants to do about a tip credit, how much waiters and waitresses make. It was $100,000. And I didn't realize that it could be that great. Somebody could be taking uh, home well over $100,000. Uh, is a service that is a certain... How uh, should they make minimum wage? And it's all on tape beginning to end. But then when the candidate said, no, I didn't say that, it became a story. Somebody reported that last week I, I talked about cutting servers' wages. I'm here to look everybody in the eye and tell you I never said that. I would not. Go ahead and laugh all you want. I would never say that. And when we do a reality check in that particular case saying, yes, you did, here is what he said, here is what a tip credit is, here is what it means, he changed his definition of a tip credit. What I said last week was this. When I was asked about a tip credit, I said absolutely. I never was, uh, I was asked next, so you're saying reduce the minimum wage. I said we can't do that. Are you suggesting you repeal minimum wage law? Just minimum well, I don't know that you can do that. I mean, we talked about that before. We got a federal minimum wage law that's 715 or 725 an hour. No, you don't do that. What I was talking about is we have to find a way for everybody to succeed. He is a fiery, populist, conservative candidate who uh, says many, many things, and I think he gets excited. I don't know what my colleagues think, but he gets excited and, and gets caught up in what he says. And some of the stuff is are, you have to ask him later, did you really mean that? Well, I didn't say that. And that happens quite a bit. I don't know if Pat was there, but we were at the Farm Fest debate, and uh, it was on Wednesday, and Margaret Anderson Kelleher said... Now, my Republican opponent, Tom Emmer, has not supported biofuels, and I'm going to be very interested in his answer today, because he's voted against it in 2008, in 2008 twice, in 2005, and, you know, it's interesting when people don't, they say one thing, and they actually do another. And you saw Tom Emmer, and he was like, <laughs> he's like looking at his staff what like, what happened here, you know, and then he like walks down and comes back and he's like, well, Margaret, I think I voted for that all the time. I'm not sure where Margaret's looking, but uh, I had to ask because I'm pretty sure I voted for uh, the biodiesel man. And then two minutes later, you know, the staff comes up and Representative Emmer says later, you know, as a matter of fact, I did vote for E20, but I didn't vote for biodiesel. I got to make it clear that when I was listening to Margaret and I thought I voted for biodiesel, I voted for E20. Voted against biodiesel, but here's what I would tell you. But I did vote, I mean, and we actually went back and looked at this, right. and he voted for the biodiesel credit on the way out when it was going to conference committee, but on the way back he voted against it because there was, he said there was another mandate that he didn't like in it. We did a story, must have been a month or two months ago, on uh, Tom Emmer, the Republican candidate for governor, and he was on our air, I think it was in May, he was on our air, and he said something like, I can boil down all of the state agencies from 26 to 12 rather quickly. Uh, and the follow there was no follow-up question on whether or not how he was going to do that. And one of our editors said, well, how is he going to do that? And so I went to Tom Emmer the next day and I said, how are you going to do it? And he kind of gave uh, an example of how he was going to do it but didn't really get into specifics. And I went to another event and I asked him, how are you going to do that? Representative, can you give us an idea when you're going to start to lay out some of the more, more of the details in terms of the redesigning government? You know what, Tom, that's great. And uh, I appreciate those questions will come. You know, when a governor lays out his or her uh, budget plan, that comes uh, much later. Uh, but you're entitled to know some of the details. But I would say to people like you, they will be released as the campaign goes forward. We're not going to give you uh, tomorrow where you get to sit down and start picking apart all this different stuff. And he didn't say. And so I figured, well, I'm not really getting anywhere with this. I think I'm going to go back and listen to all of his speeches, debates, and figure out whether or not he can do it from just hearing this. Because uh, Tom Emmer gives a lot of anecdotes. And I think I came up with six or eight that he did. Wait a second, we've got four agencies that all deal with water? Why does the state of Minnesota have a Department of Health and a Department of Health and Human Services? Has anybody ever asked themselves why the state of Minnesota has a Department of Human Rights when the EEOC does essentially the same thing? You can sit down and start looking all the duplication across agencies. And then I started calling around to the state agencies and the former commissioners of those agencies who are now outside of the agencies 
uh, under Governor Pawlenty, so it was a Republican administration, I started asking them, can he really eliminate the Minnesota Department of, or the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency? And is it gonna save 1.6 billion? And uh, Tim Marks, who's now in New York, said absolutely not. Uh, as a matter of fact, if we close this shop up, if it's closed up, we'll be sued because uh, we give out, we, the way we make money is we give out bonds and uh, our bond holders aren't gonna be too happy with the state of Minnesota if that happens. So we ran a big story on, okay, this is what Tom Emmer's proposing. He's not providing any specifics. Um, and that night I got a call from one of Tom Emmer's uh, people and they said, oh, by the way, we are gonna do an Emmer truth check on you. And I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, you know, we vetted this story really hard and we sure we, you know, we, we double and triple checked everything. And I was like, well, I'm really interested to see what you guys come up with. And they didn't talk anything about the state agencies that he was gonna cut. They talked about a comment he made on uh, midday with Gary Eichten where he said he could cut a third of the st state government spending, about $20 billion. And I think that was in like my first graph of my story and didn't even really touch on it because I think I said, you know, he's made some pretty gold, bold claims about cutting government and this is one of them. And they seized on that and just said, you know, that's not true. Uh, what he meant to say was, uh, you know, it's over four years, not two years, I believe, and there were all these other things. And, you know, I was kind of under the impression, okay, well, I'm gonna come back at these guys because this isn't the only time he said it. Um, and my desk said, don't get involved. Just, uh, you know, your story's solid. You know, you don't want to go on a back and forth with this. But it does kind of show this interesting parallel where we're trying to get the, the facts out there, and now these campaigns have their own. We're gonna get the facts out there too, um, and, and then they'll send something out and spin it. And all of the campaigns do this where they will say, okay, well, no, you're wrong. We, we're seizing on this issue as opposed to this issue. And it's actually quite interesting whenever you do a story that has some impact that they're not happy about, the, the campaigns, whether they're Republican, Democrat, Independent, will come back at you pretty, diff pretty hard and say, hey, you know, you, you got this wrong, or this is kind of, you know, squishy or gray area where you're not really seizing on.